Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to start with our velocity vector that we ended up with on the previous video and now try to get to the acceleration vector. Of course, the way we do that is to take the derivative of the velocity vector with respect to time since the velocity vector is a function of time. So starting with this equation right here, we're going to take the derivative. So that means that the acceleration with respect to time is going to be equal to 12 in the i direction, which means we have a constant acceleration in the x direction, and then plus 2t in the j direction or y direction. That means that the y, in the y direction, the acceleration, at least that component of the acceleration, is increasing over time. Again, we're going to evaluate, in this case, the velocity vector with respect to various values for time. We'll do the same for the acceleration vector and see what we get. So first, the velocity vector when t is equal to 0, well, that means we're going to have 0i plus 0j, which means at t equals 0, the object is not moving. So we can say then this would be at t equals 0. Then we again find it for t is equal to 1. And that gives us uh, 12 in the i direction plus 1 in the j direction. So that means our velocity vector, if we call that 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 30, that means we're going to get something that looks like this. And so that would be our t is equal to uh, 1 vector. Again, finding the velocity vector t is equal to 2, that gives us um, 2 times 12, which is 24 in the i direction, plus 4 in the j direction. So you can see that we have steady gains 12 per second in the i direction, but in the j direction we have a quadratic increase in the velocity component. So that looks like it's going to look something like this. That would do for t is equal to 2. And if we do it for one more value for t, the velocity when t is equal to 3, that's equal to 36i plus 9j. And that means that we have a vector that's going to look something like this. So that's for t is equal to 3. So you can see that our velocity started at 0 and now starts to increase like this, which means that we're going to have a kind of a parabolic path on our position. All right, finding the equivalent of acceleration vectors with respect to time, starting at a when time is equal to 0. Let's see here. Notice that gives us 0 for the j component, but 12 for the i component. So we have 12 in the i direction, which means right from the start, when time is equal to 0, we have an acceleration like this, where we have a component in the x direction. We may have zero velocity at the moment when time equals zero, but there's already an acceleration of 12, presumably, meters per second squared of the unit term meters per second. So the acceleration vector when t is equal to 1, that would be equal to 12 in the i direction. Notice the x component doesn't change, but we get plus 2 in the j direction. So that means when t is equal to 1, we have an acceleration component that looks like this. So here, this here would be t is equal to 1. Then if we find the acceleration for t is equal to 2, we get 12 in the i direction plus 4 in the j direction. And I think you can start seeing the pattern that we're going to get. Our acceleration is going to have an x component that's constant, but our y component is going to grow. And so that means our acceleration is going to go like that over time. So acceleration when t is equal to 3 is equal to 12i plus 6j, and that would be our next acceleration vector like this. So this would be a t equals 2 and a t equals 3. You can see that slowly the acceleration begins to have a larger, larger component in the y direction when the x component remains constant. So that again gives you a good feel for what position vectors, velocity vectors, in this case acceleration vectors look like in, in this case, two-dimensional space, but it's extrapolated to three dimensions as well. And that is how it's done.